What you are, speak so loud that the world can't hear what you say. They're looking at your walk, not listening to your talk. They're judging by your actions. Every day. Don't believe. You'll deceive. By claiming what you've never known. They'll accept what they see, Roy, and know you to be. They'll know you by your life alone. So don't you be. By claiming what you've never known, they'll accept only what they see and know you to be. They'll know you by your life, even if you're a child, Roy. Alone. Hereby we do know that we know him, if we keep his commandments. He that saith, I know him, and I was once in a town called Durban. Durban is a very great city, something like San Francisco, perhaps Chicago maybe, I'd say. But it's quite something, Durban. Now, there was a young fellow with a tie and a Bible and tracks. All in his pocket. And he was standing in the center of Durban in the town gardens. With all the statues. Here's the town hall. Here's the uh, old post office. At the heart of this big city. And the crowd. And as he was standing there. He was saying stop. Stop. Please you need to read this. You need to know this. Read it. I beg you for your soul's sake. Oh stop. And I saw this boy desperate that no one would get past him. And I thought well look at him. He's clean. He looks like a Christian. Look at him daring. He doesn't want anyone to escape. So suddenly he looks through the crowd and he sees me. So he comes and he says, are you Keith Daniel? Yes. Oh, I've heard you preach many times. And so he says, Mr. Daniel, have you got any time to spare? Are you in a hurry? No, I've got a bit of time. Would you be willing to come and speak to someone I've been witnessing to, but I can't get through to? He just did like a deadness. He listens, but it's like a, nothing makes him come to Christ. He's... Broken, he's smashed in life, he's sitting in the gutter. Would you come? He's Afrikaans speaking, but he understands English. So I went with him down these steps by the statues, and there was this tramp, unshaven, old clothes, haggard, lying, sitting in the, down like a tramp in the gutter you know, against this wall. And this fellow stands up slowly when he sees us both coming to him. And this young fellow says to him, listen, I know that I've tried and you just don't seem to realize what God can do for you. I don't know why, I can't, but this man's a preacher and I believe God sent him along here for you. And I believe he'll reach your heart. God will reach your heart through the scriptures. This man knows. Won't you please listen? So this man said, yes, go on, go ahead. So I do what I always do. I quote the Bible. I quoted verses upon verses. And suddenly this tramp, unsaving, shoes, the one shoe was fallen off. It was, I don't even know why he's wearing it. He was rock bottom. <laughs> but he looked at me and he started quoting the scriptures with me. Yeah. King James. Yeah. So I quoted other scriptures, a couple more, and I waited and he started just finishing them off word perfect. <laughs> About salvation and hell and heaven and 
Pointed on men wants to die after this the judgment. You can't believe what scriptures he knew in the English. So I looked at him startled and I said, You know everything that I know. You know how to be saved. You know how to tell it. You know the scriptures. And I was so astonished. I said, How is this possible that you know everything and you're in this state? And tears began down my face. I was so broken. At this shock to my whole being, tears came down his face. When he saw me weeping, he knew I wasn't just there to do the right thing as a man with a broken heart. He said, Sir, I was a preacher like you in the Dutch Reformed Church, the Enki Kirk. I was in the Quirk School, the Theological Seminar at Stellenbosch. I got the highest marks and degrees of all the students qualifying to be ordained as ministers across the land in the largest church in the country. The highest marks. And because I had this gift of speaking, somehow I just had the gift of speaking. And people were gripped. They put me in one of the largest Dutch Reformed churches in the country where there was a lot of ministers. I think he said six, and he said, brother, he said, sir, there was the main preacher, and then there was me, this young fellow, and they let me preach just as much as him, because some everybody was gripped. But I had a problem, sir. Sin. I always thought God would somewhere along the line deal with sin, but it never stopped right through from the day I said I was saved. I was still in sin. Right through queer school, the theological, right into the pulpits, one of the greatest pulpits in South Africa. And there are thousands because it's a deeply religious country. And then he said, sir, one day I was preaching. And I looked down at the congregation and I saw faces of people who knew about my sin. And they sat there just shaking their heads at me. I could hardly finish preaching in my contempt of myself being in a pulpit and people who know about my sin. Oh, I, I didn't know what to do. So I Next weekend I went up there praying and asking God for mercy with a sermon but trembling. And I looked out and said there were more who knew about my sin. I looked at these faces. Oh, the devil doesn't let you get away, is it? He's too great an enemy. He just waits for when you really fall and multitudes stumble after you. If he doesn't give up yet, if he hasn't exposed you yet, it's coming. I walked off that pulpit halfway through the sermon, weeping. I walked out of the church. I walked away from my family. I walked away from my home. I walked away from all the privileges. I walked away. And uh, to cut a long story short, this is what I became in the gutter. But you see, I had no right to preach. I had no right. I was wrong. I was wrong. And many were going to stumble over my life if I stayed. But I lost everything in life. Rather than to be used of the devil. To turn people away from God. And that's what I was going to do if I stayed. Forever. Turn them away. Then he shook me more. He turned to this young man with a tie, the Bible and the tracks. Young man. You are the same. You have no right to be here on the street with a Bible and tracks. 
stopping everybody as if you know the way and you have the right to tell them they have escaped damnation and find Christ. You have no right, sir. You have no right. You are wrong. I looked at this boy. His eyes just went, whoa. He was white. His little lips shaking. It was a terrible moment when that happens. He said, I watched you when you come out here with your tracks. I watch you because of where I come from. I watched you carefully when you come talking to me. I watched. But I watched you one day speaking to some men here in this town gardens. I watched you laughing with them. I thought, how can you laugh with these wicked men? I know their sins. I watched you put your Bible into your pocket and your tracks, and I watched you go with them into that building. Because I know something about those people. I waited. I waited a long time until they came out. Eventually you came out. And within a few days you were back here. With the tracks and the Bible telling the world to get saved. Let me tell you something. You are still in your sin. And no one would listen to you in this world again. If they knew. I had no right you have no right. You're wrong thinking you do. Until God truly saves you or me, we have no right. And then he shook me. He started quoting scriptures that I wish every single preacher dared to have the courage to quote as to why. He and that boy had no right. Be not deceived. No unrighteous person shall enter the kingdom of heaven. Not that defileth. Then God names the sins. Which today we condone and ordain people. Yeah, well, doesn't matter. It's just God's word. What does God matter anymore to religion? This boy shocked us. He stood there and eventually shouted. Undone, but he shouted, So what? So what? No one's perfect. No one's sinless. I'm not talking about sinless perfection, young man. I'm talking about what God's word says. Condemns you if God hasn't set you free from these things. Don't be deceived. No. You're wrong. And he turned... And he walked up those steps away from this Dutch reformed Dumini that gave up to be honest. He walked away from us up back in the streets with his Bible and his tracks and his sin. Probably to this day. What you are, speak so loud that the world can't hear what you say. They're looking at your walk, not listening to your talk. They're judging by your action. Every day, don't believe, you'll deceive by claiming what you've never known. They'll accept what they see, Roy. And know you to be, they'll know you by your life alone. So don't you believe that you'll 
DC by claiming what you've never known. They'll accept only what they see and know you to be. They'll know you by your life. Even if you're a child, Roy. Alone. 